Oh, bonjour, madame and monsieur. How are you? How are you coping in these troubled times? <laughs> I'm sick of hearing that sentence, but unfortunately, it's very true. We are in troubled times and difficult times and unprecedented times. But um, we've just got to get on with it, really. I like to get myself into a routine. So luckily, my other half is at work still. Um, so I've shower curtains and bathroom equipment, etc., etc. Um, so they're an online company, so they're still open. But it also gives me a great opportunity to get into a routine myself because I take him to work early in the morning and I bring him back in the afternoon. So I still see my day as a working day from Monday to Friday. So it's quite good to keep in a routine, routine really. Um, obviously, normally I'd be in the salon and I'd be doing, I'd be, um, I would actually deliver in courses for Matrix as well. So this week I would have had a creative formulations and toning course booked with me. So I thought I'd demonstrate how to do a bit of express creative toning. Because, and I say the word express, because even though express means really, really quick, um, this is still quite a long job, but it's still quicker than most creative jobs. Um, so this one is more like a vivid ba balayage approach. So first of all, I've got my pre-bleached client and she's bleached up to a very warm nine. Uh, and I bonded it as well. Because I find that if you if you use bond insurance in the hair, your colours always come out better because it's prepped the hair internally and porosity adjusted externally to a degree. So it's quite express and quick in a way because it's not too fiddly and it's on damp hair, not sopping wet hair and not dry hair. But wet enough because I'm going to be using So Colour Cult Semi Permanent. So semi permanents are their direct range. So their direct range comes in white tubes like that. So when it says direct, it means it comes direct from the tube and you don't have to mix it with anything else. You don't have to mix it with a developer. So a direct and a semi are the same things. Um, when somebody says a demi-permanent or a quasi-permanent, that means you have to mix it with some sort of developer. And those colours contain semi-permanent dyes as well as permanent dyes. So first of all, what I'm going to be doing is sectioning my client into old school quadrant sectioning. There we go. Old, cool, old school 
quadrant section in of the hair. I'm going to start at the back this time. I want to, no particular reason actually. Right then. So, so first of all, actually let me talk about the colours what I'm using. So I'm using So Colour Court uh, Lucky Ducky Yellow. Direct, so colour called Direct uh, Ricky Zito Bambino Blue, <laughs> and a mix of equal parts clear, sparkling rose, and ruby red. To. So another tip when you're choosing your colours, because obviously they're all going to sit next to each other and I'm not going to separate them, so some of them will blend into the others. So what I have to think of is what's going to happen when the blue mixes in with the yellow or overlays the yellow. So obviously we know from our colour wheel, blue and yellow make green, so I'll get some sort of green going on there. What will happen? when my blue mixes in with my reddish concoction. Well, we all know blue and red make some sort of purple, depending on what you use. So I'm gonna get some purple color there. And then I've got this red with the yellow. Now that's gonna be an odd one because this red is very, very cool and that yellow is very, very warm. So normally you'd get a red and a yellow would make an orange, but I don't see it as an orange, but I still see it as a compatible color. So it should come out something like a, I'm imagining something like a dark coral, so a cooler orange, but we'll soon find out. So basically, not, over, not only have I got three colours, I've got other colours as well that's mixed in with it. So I'll be, I'll be seeing Lucky Duck Yellow, a green, Bambino Blue, a purple, the ruby red sparkling rose clear mix and the corally colour that I get from that as well. So always think of your colours and what other colours are going to come from it and whether they're going to be compatible or not. So that's my little tip of the day. So first of all, this is a real easy one because we just go up through each section at a diagonal. So of my sections, I'd play, probably say, about a finger length, yeah? So it doesn't matter what colour you start off with, just make sure you go around either clockwise or anti-clockwise so you don't get them mixed up. There you go, so that's quite heavy placement to about halfway down and then I'm just going to drag that through the ends. Give my fingers a wipe. Then go into my next section. Again, you don't have to be too precious with your sections because it's all about the effect afterwards basically so i'm going to go around i tend to go around clockwise i'm going to go around clockwise here so my next color is yellow i 
halfway down and drag. So there you go, I've got my three colours. Now what I'm going to do next is go up that section, repeating it, and go into the next section, repeat that, go to the front, repeat that, and that'll be it. So let's get going. Right, as I come on to the next section at the back, I'm going to shake things up a bit. So automatically, you'd think I'd follow the pattern there, wouldn't you? Like start off with the, the uh, ruby red mixture first, and then go on to the yellow and go into the blue. But I'm going to start it different this time. I'm going to start off with the blue. Still at a diagonal. There's all the back done. I want to come round to the sides. I 
I'll work on a diagonal again. So following the shape of the hairline round, we're still on a diagonal. So the two middle sections have gone up into like a V shape and this is going into an upside down chevron shape, if that's the right word. And again, I'm starting off with a different colour. Let's go yellow here. This side, you can see my section's a lot smaller than the other side. Doesn't really matter, it's gonna make no difference because you'll want a variation in color placement anyway. And because I've got next to a, I'm next to a, a blue and a, a red there, I'm going in with my yellow as my first section.
There you go. All finished. So I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes and then do something quite dramatic with it. So we're halfway through development and the dramatic thing I'm going to do to this is this. Comb it all the way through the comb. What this does, it actually gives it a little bit more dimension to the colour because you're now creating new colours with the colours that are already there. Here we go. I've rinsed off the colour, popped through a little bit of Keep Me Vivid Laminator. That just acid balances all the hair back out again, tightens the hair strand and locks in the colour. And now I'm going to blow dry it with some smooth set. Because it's a great product, smells fabulous, but the hair is in such a good condition from the So Colour Cult Direct. It's got really heavy conditioning properties, so you really feel the benefit on top of bleached hair.
my blow dry. Just gonna pop a little bit of mega varnish through. <laughs> As you can see, it's shiny already, even without putting any of the, the varnish through it. I'm really pleased with the, the cocktail mix I did using the Sparkling Rose, the Clear and the Ruby Red. It's actually come out a very similar colour to Watercolour Violet Berry. So if you want, if you like the colour of Violet Berry, and you want a cold version of it, there's a nice little mix for you. Nice little formulation. Hope you like it.